Okay. You're on, Jules. Hi, I'm on. Great. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Um, well, actually, since you ask, Cosmo, um, these knuckle rings are part of the very inception of the brand. And what v -Jewels does is it starts from a very honest and open place. And what I do is sort of relate feelings into shapes. So with the knuckle ring, how it was developed in 2007 was I was using bones from a country mouse that I found in the countryside in Napa Valley. And so the sun sucked all of the flesh and everything eventually off of these bones and they're exposed. So when I saw those, I said, oh my goodness, I have to use this. And I had already developed the concept based on doing my hair, taking my hair down. There's a rubber band on my hand and I wrapped it around my finger and I said, oh wow, oh wow, because there are two lines that cross and at this point the body can wrap around it. Because one of the core values of Be Jewels as a designer is that it's fashion and also function. So with that, I thought, okay, I'm gonna take these mouse bones and I'm gonna wrap them around my finger, but I have to have negative space here because the body changes and I have to respect the change of the body. And I also want to embrace negative space because normally in the jewelry industry, they never think about negative space. They always want to fill it, fill it, fill it. They want to avoid negative space. <clears throat> so with me, I grew up with architects, my family, my mother, my father, they were architects. And so my twin sister and I actually went to class with my mother while she was getting her master's. So the use of space, um, respecting your environment, being able to make choices and stack, all of these things that the jewelry industry may not have thought of up until this decade. <laughs> so with the shape, that's when I developed it in 2006, with the, with the bones, which when you told me about your project, I was like, uh-huh, <laughs> good idea. So then once you have the general concept, what I do is I continue from simple. Normally the, the nature of everything in the world goes from simple to more chaotic. And in my world, what I want to do is relieve the chaos and try to head more towards the simple. So with this, these are the very first versions of the knuckle ring after the bones. And then from there, what I wanted to do is be able to impress value and also ideas into it. So what I did was I put the diamonds on the inside, therefore the cost of the piece can go up, but also my intimacy, my relationship with it becomes deeper. And then because it's for me, not everyone sees like this where you put the stone on the outside. Here it's just for me. So then when I put it here, my response is to put the diamonds on the top. And so this I did in 2007. And then the natural evolution is to continue to add with simplicity, not complication. Mm -hmm. So then the next version is this, black diamonds. And so basically what this is doing, it's embracing the negative space and it brings positivity into it. So the stories that I have with Bejewels are totally based on embracing and empowering yourself, regardless if you're a man or a female. And then also being able to make your own choices. So with this one, these are my pearls. They're like little pearl bubbles just floating. Mm -hmm. So in fact, this to me, it's more than decoration. It's something, it is evident that the person who chooses to wear this thinks about their body, thinks about their choices, thinks about how they appear, but also, first and foremost, how they feel. So with that idea in mind, I always want to constantly change things because our feelings are changing. Our emotions are constantly changing. So I look at this and I said, now I have to change this. This is going up, right? I also do the bar ring, which was born in 2004, and that's mm -hmm. a horizontal application of a ring. And this is born from that idea. But so what I wanted to do with this knuckle ring was change it. 
but not go chaotic, which would mean implementing something outside of it, which makes it unnatural. So what I did was put this guy inside of this guy to develop okay. this piece. But when you put something into something, there's always a reaction. For every action, there's a reaction. So I put metal against metal. I imagine that's too much metal here. I must take it out. So it's we carved, mm -hmm. so we took it out. So I actually put in negative space, mm -hmm. which normally we don't do. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I developed this one. Because when you look at this original piece, I've already put the diamonds in here. I've already put the stones on top. Now I need more volume. I need more space to create an idea. So I want to bring it up. I'm from New York, so we understand there's no more space on the ground, on the surface, so you build up. So I took this piece and put something on top of it. Mm -hmm. I put okay. itself on top. And the pills on the inside. Inside. And this idea, so basically this is a knuckle ring, which is combined with another concept, and it's another core value with Bejewels, and it's the bling privé. It's the, the stones are here for you. It's how you interact with the stones. So this is how this idea was born. So what I did, I can show you the conception of that concept is here. <coughs> so the gem fit, is a trademarked phrase that I use when you put gemstones close to the skin. So instead of diamonds or stones on the surface and then the metal and then the skin, what I've done is I've put the metal, the stone, and then the skin. So it's actually the stones that fit the piece. And now, since the stones are touching me, I get to take advantage of all the metaphysical qualities of the pearl. So that's where I can implement this. So with that idea, then I can continue thinking in a jeweler frame of mind. And I think, okay, well, if I'm an alchemist, so to speak, if I can touch this, it'll turn to gold. So then we create this piece. So these are not pearls. These are perfect beads, but it's more or less the metamorphosis into something. Mm. And I know if I have this idea, my clients will too. So you always have to think ahead, mm. not only about your own concept, but how to develop further. So if I think about this, then I think, well, maybe not in gold, maybe in silver. But maybe they don't want silver. Maybe they still want the pearls. So then they have gold okay. and then the pearls. But what if they don't want it here? What if they want it here? <laughs> so all of these ideas, this is basically the development of a very, very simple concept that never got more complicated. It only stays simple. And then with this concept, I can take it and run with it. In fact, I developed an entire collection based off of this idea. So. I'll show you now that concept <clears throat> in a more high-end world. Let's go over here. You have to keep the good, the good stuff under the glass. So based on interacting with gems and really embracing the potential, the metaphysical quality of the gems, what I've done is I've created the new bar ring. Labradorite, amethyst, all custom cut by my lapidaries. Now my skin gets to touch the stone, and now I'm activated. Whatever qualities are inside of these stones, I released them. So even though I'm just wearing a piece, I've made a choice to be constantly active mm -hmm. with, my own, with my own decisions, with how I look, and this shape is evolved from my original bar ring from 2004. And it's a single finger fit and a multi finger look. It's shorter on this side, longer on this side. That way, when a person could put it here, maybe it doesn't fit.
they can switch it around, put it on the other finger. Mm -hmm. So with this idea, you see it applied here. Exactly. This is 10 years of a bar ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have our opening price point, and then eventually we have our super high end. And with this, this collection, Atelier Bijoules, it's just come out. So we're actually launching it officially here with you. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next step in the concept is my color choices, are the cuts of the stones, which stones I'm going to use, what are their metaphysical qualities. So I've made strategic partnerships with different types of stone vendors from all over the world. One being <clears throat> a custom lapidary worker that I developed the coffin cut. The coffin cut has never existed before. The word coffin and cut together are mine. Just as we said over there, gem fit is mine because I have to claim ownership of my ideas. If not, they become free. And basically what I have to do is be able to share it and that's why I'm speaking now about my ideas because we don't want to just copyright, we want to copy left we want to share, not keep for ourselves. Because if we just keep it for ourselves, then no one will be able to evolve or develop. So we want to be not ego-driven. We want to give this away. So here we have the black onyx and the rutilated quartz. And this is a solid stone and a clear stone. Rutilated quartz, basically, this is giving some texture to the stone choice. But so I want to see my skin, and I want to understand what the qualities of these stones are. And I'm bracing the negative space that you see here, that you see here, that you see here. Because I don't want my client to think that they're coincé, that they're too tight. I want them to be able to breathe, even just with the idea. Their body needs to evolve and move and change. So can their jewelry. So with this, then we move... Here, we have the green amethyst. This is a coffin cut. This is a bullet of rose quartz. So here, I'm starting also to implement 3D technology, because normally, just as we were speaking before, mm -hmm. I was hand-making everything. Then we started making molds. And then from there, I wanted to go slow down the process, but speed up the concept. So we started implementing the 3D work. Mm -hmm. So because I'm working with lapidaries that are hand cutting the stones, in response, I wanted to work with the future, which would be 3D. Mm -hmm. So from there, I wanted to also continue using different words and making sure that my, my clients understood that we could be subversive, but still be quite obvious. So. This is the blood garnet. This is a coffin cut garnet. And then this is a blood garnet bullet. The words blood, coffin, the shape of the new earring. It's a cross. It's a hand harvested pearl. It's a basic defense mechanism. It's part of nature. That's how a pearl is created. So this cross, all of these words, it's how I present the concept without being overly, overly subversive, but it's sort of bringing people's life and death into a reality. Fashion and jewelry perceives themselves in a certain way. I want to make sure that my client sees who they truly are. So by using words like blood, coffin, using a cross, it's something that has, um, it's uh, not quite tangible, but it's a reality that we all live and we all die. So, without taking ourselves too seriously, because I find that a lot of, a lot of us do, I want to be able to joke around with it. So I do this subversive kind of stuff all the time. But this is developed, this is an ear cuff, not a ring. It's developed from these. So, I'm looking at my finger, I'm thinking about development. I said, if I can build two stackables on my finger, I should be able to do it with my ear cups. Okay. I made these with the exact same wax that I made these. Okay. 
So then we also have this piece. This is a, an amethyst bullet and then a lightning ridge black opal, all handmade, the 14 karat gold. And so this is a mine relationship that I have with, this, with these people, a family in Lightning Ridge, which is one of the outbacks of Australia. And they're so dedicated to the process that when I met all of these stone vendors, it was so inspirational that I felt obligated to create an entire collection based off of my relationships. So everything that we can see here is available because it's my idea as B Tools, the designer. This collection, Atelier collection, is more personal because it's me. It's my voyage. It's my, my concepts that now I can apply at a higher price point <clears throat> with a more intimate story. And every piece is numbered and comes with a certificate of authenticity. And it goes into detail about its origin of idea, its dimensions, and its materials. All of these are also single-sided earrings. And here is a sunstone. The radiant cut, using the word radiant and applying it to sunstone, means that we sort of empower the person to stay happy. Sunstone is a new gem. So what I've done is created a partnership with Sunstone. This, they come from only one place in the world. They're super, super rare. So in the early 1990s, Tiffany's wanted to create a more affordable, clear stone, like a diamond. So they went in and they began to excavate. They bought all of the mines from the families they realized they couldn't actually arrive at this goal. So then they sold back all the mines to the family, and now I work with the families. So now it's more of an intimate relationship with every stone that I've used. And that, to me, is something super special. So we look at this one, for example. It's not only about the relationships that I have, but it's about the experience of wearing a piece of jewelry with an earring. And I think another reason why I haven't been overly doing the earring is because there are some faults with an earring. When you put an earring in and you lose the back, now you have just one earring, sort of like a lost sock. So what I did was create, it's true, the Omega clip. Okay. So now this is one experience, this is one piece of jewelry that will never leave you. And then when you look at this piece from this angle, what I've done is made the post out in the front, and then I've pulled back the second component so it adds depth and dimension. Mm -hmm. Because another core value of Bejewels is that we're deep. You gotta dive. You have to do your research, and once you discover something, it helps change your world. It helps enable and access your potential as a human being. It's not just jewelry. It's an experience based on a product. So we also have <clears throat> short versions. This is another radiant cut sunstone with uh, black opal from Lightning Ridge. Mother of Pearl sunstone. This guy's one of my favorites. Sunstone. Hand cultured pearl, where basically you take the, the flaw inside of the body of the oyster, you move it, the nature of the oyster will react in this shape. So it's protecting itself. So this shape is a cross made as a reaction of defense from the organism. And I find it so beautiful. It's so rare. I've never, and when I saw this, once again, I had a revelation. Like every minute I was like, oh my God, I have to, give me that. And then from there, we go here. And then you see the evolution of the concept I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. So we have the knuckle ring with the pearls, and then here, because there are four prongs and I created volume, it was a natural inclination to set those four prongs with the stone. So this is a Tanzanian zircon, hand cut by a, a lapidary friend of mine. So when you wear this, because there's still volume, mm -hmm. I can still move. Okay. So fashion and function, but also aesthetic and choices. Et voilà. Bravo, j'ai envie d'applaudir. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs>